we are working on that. It's uh, we have a backlog of uh, videos to to post. So it's a it's a pleasure it's a pleasure to have here today uh, Professor Walter Orejana. Professor uh, Orejana got his bachelor's in '88 at the uh, Universidad de Chile. His master's in 92 and PhD in 97 at USP, Sao Paulo. Then he did uh, three postdocs, uh, 98, 2000 uh, UFMG in Brazil, 2000, 2004 USP in Brazil, USP, Sao Paulo, and 2004 and 2007 at uh, Universidad de Chile. And since 2007 to now, he has been a uh, uh, professor at uh, Universidad Andrés Bejo in Chile, uh, Santiago. Uh, and today he's going to talk to us about uh, heterogeneous catalysis and kinetics at atomic level, an approach from ab initio calculations. Professor Arejana, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation and the, the microphone is yours. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, well, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to, to speak to this uh, audience uh, from mainly from the Universidad de Berlanda, where we, I have a lot of friends there. Uh, so, uh, in this talk, I would like to, uh, to talk about uh, an an initial approach to to try to understand some properties of catalysis. Okay, so uh, let me uh, show you our the outlook of the presentation. Uh, first, I would like to speak uh, some some uh, some approach the approach that we are using the DFT and how we apply this DFT method to, uh, to study uh, uh, catalytic properties in vacuum and also uh, considering the, the, the solution. And then I would like to talk about some uh, devices for the energy conversion that we that we ha that have some interesting um, process to convert energy from electrochemical energy to electricity. Then I would like to show uh, some result for uh, some center metal centers in graphene, and also uh, this the same uh, structure for the metal center surrounded by nitrogen, for instance, uh, in, in molecules which are adsorbed on carbon nanotube. And finally, I would like to show something about uh, properties of this uh, molecule, which are catalyst, in, uh, in acidic and alkaline media. Okay, so uh, the first question, the main question that we have uh, to this kind of problem is how we describe solid nanostructure and molecules at atomic level. This is the, the, the main problem that we have with, with, this, uh, with the properties of these materials. So the answer is quantum mechanics. Uh, essentially, the solving this equation, the Schrodinger equation, uh, where H is the Hamiltonian of the system, which are this form. So uh, we have here the, the kinetic energy of the nucleus, the electrons, the repulsive energy between electrons, the attraction, the attractive energy of electrons in, on the nucleus and the repulsion from nucleus. So this system typically have a lot of variable which we have one equation for one electron, essentially. So in our typical system, we have 10 to 22 electrons. So this resolving this, this equation is not possible. Okay, so we need a lot of uh, approximations. Mainly we have, we need four approximations. 
that can essentially reduce the problem. The first one is the Bono-Penheimer approximation, which essentially is the coupling between electron and nucleus. Then the density functional theory is used to uh, describe the electron-electron interaction. Uh, the third is the pseudo potential method, which uh, treat the electron ion interaction. And finally, the supercell method with model periodic structure. Okay, so with these four approximations, you can reduce enormously the problem to solve this equation. So let's start with the with the main approximation, which is the von Oppenheimer approximation, uh, which is based on the on the cube mass of nucleus with respect to electrons. So the time that the time the time of response of the nucleus is very slow, okay, as compared with electron. So your wave function will depend on the electronic coordinate and the nucleus coordinate can be separated. So the electronic term have uh, the position of the nucleus as a parameter, okay? And we have a, another wave function only for the nucleus. So the interesting part is this. So with introducing this, uh, uh, this approximation, you can reduce the problem enormously. Mainly you, you can uh, discard the kinetic energy of the nucleus, and all the interaction between electrons and nucleus uh, will transfer to this potential, which, which is an external potential. So in this way, with the von Oppenheimer approximation, we have this Hamiltonian, reduced Hamiltonian, and you can uh, obtain the total energy of the system by the expectation value with respect to the electronic wave function, this one, okay? When you have the total energy of the system, you can calculate the, the, the forces. So, uh, with this approximation, we also have the, the same problem with the, a large number of electrons of the system because these Hamiltonian depend on the electrons. So, to, to solve this problem, in 1964 was introduced the density functional theory by Walter Kohn, which essentially reduce the problem of the many electrons to only one variable. So this variable is the density of the electrons of the system. So this wave function of all the electrons is with n variable is reduced to one variable, the density of the electrons in this way. So with this approach, we essentially have two consequences. The first one is that the total energy can be right in terms of the density in this, in this form. And the second consequence is if you minimize this energy with respect to the density, the minimum energy will correspond to the density of the ground state of the system. So you can find the 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 total energy of the system at the density of the ground state. So another interesting thing here in this equation is that this, this uh, kinetic energy is only representing the non-interacting uh, particles, okay? So this second term is uh, external potential, the, the, the potential that fills the electrons. This is the Hartree potential, which is the repulsive interaction between electrons, and this term is not known. Okay, so it's, it's, a, it's a known term with the chain correlation terms. So we put here all this, uh, the all the quantum interaction that are not included in the rest of the equation. So the only problem to the with this uh, method is to find a correct exchange correlation terms. So with with the with this approach, with these two approach, we can write the problem in uh, and this equation, which is, is the Kohn-Sham equation, where the variable, the variable here is the electron of the system, and this effective potential corresponds the potential that 
that I'll describe later. So uh, these terms, the unknown terms, the exchange correlation terms, with import, with include all the quantum uh, effect of the system, can be described alternatively with another approach. For example, uh, we, it can be calculated in a homogeneous electron, which is called the local density approximation. So this term is calculated for an homogeneous gas and is put in this uh, system and can be reproduced the, the, the total energy of our system. Uh, well, LDA was the first approximation and then uh, uh, come another approximation with the GGA, for instance, which introduced some gradients of this uh, local uh, density, and also there exists Van der Waals interaction or irrid uh, terms. For, for instance, this HSE um, use an exact exchange, 25% of the exact exchange, which is come from the the Hartree Fock uh, method, yeah. and have a very interesting property which. If you calculate with this uh, exchange correlation terms, um, the bank gap of the system are practically the same than the experimental one. Okay, so but the problem that I have this uh, term is that it's very difficult to calculate. It's very slow. Okay, so uh, the third approximation that we use is the pseudo potential method. We essentially. Uh, only consider the balanced electron of the system. For instance, in silicon, you have 14 electrons, and we know that balanced electrons won't participate in the chemical interaction. So these core electrons are not considered. So you, you uh, can uh, reduce the system instead of 14 electrons to 4 electrons. So this is the main reduction of the pseudo potential. Okay, so when you introduce the pseudo potential, the, 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 the wave functions, the, the, the pseudo wave function is very, uh, it's not oscillate, do not oscillate in the, in the core region. This is the core region, okay? So uh, the and the pseudo potential go slowly to zero and not diverge to the infinite. So in this way, we, we eliminate with this pseudo potential eliminate the oscillation of the wave function. This is very important because you need a, a basis set uh, with with a small quantity of of terms. For very oscillating system, you need a lot, a large basis set to reproduce the system. Okay, so uh, pseudo potential is very important to reduce the time uh, of the calculation. Finally, we have the the uh, supercell approach, which essentially use a large unit cell. For instance, for if you want to describe. Uh, a carbon nanotube, like here, uh, we we can construct a supercell with the side that we need to use, for instance, to absorb a molecule uh, over the the carbon nanotube. So the system is replicated. So you calculate the the whole properties of the system in this supercell, and the the, this supercell is uh, replicated in all directions. So in the in the axis of the nanotube, you can for it, uh, reproduce the an infinite tube. So this is the property of, of uh, an infinite tube. And uh, if you replicate in the other direction, you have to to control the distance between the 
the, the superset and the images. They, they need to be large enough that cannot uh, interact, okay? So typically you need to, to have a distance here of uh, uh, 10, 10 Armstrong. So this is the, the vacuum region that, that we know. For the case of, of uh, surfaces, uh, we construct a supercell with a slab. This is the a slab of silicon in the 001 direction. So you can see here in the upper of the, of the slab, there is a reconstruction, which is typically that we found in a silicon, super, uh, silicon surface. But the bottom of the slab is saturated by hydrogen because if you cut the material, there is electrons uh, or dangling bonds that need to be saturated in order to not introduce a spurious uh, a, a electronic activity. Okay, so in this way you can simulate a silicon surface, and also have, need to you need to have some care with the vacuum region, which needs to be large because this slab they replicate also in the z direction. Okay. And so in this way, you can choose the, the, the size of the superset that you want, that you need, for instance. So this is the problem. And the system has periodic boundary condition, so you can reproduce essentially the entire su uh, surface, or the entire, and if you need now too. Okay, so uh, the scheme of the calculation which is called the ab initio calculation, start with this uh, diagram. So you can choose the, your external potential with the potential that give you the atom in, in your structure, okay? The position of the atom in, the, in your structure. And then you pick uh, some uh, a basis set of plane waves like this, uh, but you need to cut the number of uh, plane waves because it's not possible to make a, a calculation with an infinite, uh, with an infinite uh, basis, which would be the ideal, but it's not possible. So you cut at some point, okay? And then once when, when you, uh, 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 you choose your, your basis, you can calculate a, a trial density uh, with the Occupied orbital of your system. This is the initial density. With this initial density, you can create the Hartree potential, the change correlation potential, in some approach, LDA, DGA, or whatever, and then solve the Gonsham equation. With the Gonsham equation, when the Gonsham equation is solved, you, you, you take the, the wave function and calculate the density. Okay? And this density is compared with the initial density. If these are very different, the system uh, return, okay, in a self-consistent cycle. So this is the, the term that we use as self-consistent. With you compare your initial density with the final. If they are converged, these are very similar. So you choose this density and calculate the total energy and the force. So with the force, you move the atoms and initiate the whole cycle again until the system achieves the minimum energy, okay? So how we uh, apply all this methodology to study uh, electrochemical energy conversion. Um, essentially, uh, we calculate uh, this uh, reaction, the oxygen reduction reaction, which, which is the breaking the oxygen molecule, essentially, okay? So uh, our motivation is this device, which is a proton exchange membrane fuel cell. Uh, this is an electrochemical device that works with two uh, gases, 
hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, oxygen is taken from the air, okay? So uh, hydrogen, uh, for instance, if you put hydrogen to the system, to the anode, uh, this, the molecule arrive to this, uh, to this anode and break because we have here a platinum catalyst particle which are uh, uh, absorbed on carbon black, okay? So this catalyst, platinum particle, break this, this, uh, this uh, molecule, the electron comes from a circuit, and the proton across a membrane, okay? Um, at, the, at the cathode, um, you need uh, oxygen, which is, which is taken from the air. So oxygen needs to be break. So this is the bottleneck of these devices, breaking the oxygen molecule, which costs about five electron volts in that phase. So with, with a catalyst like platinum, this, uh, the energy to break the molecule uh, lower to one electron volt or less, okay? So when the, the oxygen is break, they uh, join with the electron and the proton and the byproduct of this, of this device is water, okay? So this uh, device is, is currently used to move uh, heavy vehicles like a, a train. This is currently running in Europe. Uh, this is the first hydrogen fuel cell train. Okay, so the, the byproduct of this device is essentially water and heat. But if the reaction is a four electron reaction, yeah, this is the reaction that we need. Uh, but uh, there exists another reaction that occurs simultaneously, which is a two electron reaction, where the byproduct or the product of this reaction is a, a hydrogen peroxide. So, this is a chemical which is corrosive. So, when it's producing this, this chemical, it uh, can affect the, the catalyst, not platinum, because platinum can resist to this, to this uh, corrosive interaction of this molecule. But other catalysts typically uh, uh, do not work for a long time. So you cannot avoid uh, this, uh, this reaction, the two electron reaction. It's always present. But we need to produce more four electron reaction to, to uh, make that this device work. Okay. So the problem uh, is, for instance, to obtain a, a catalyst that can break the oxygen molecule and can resist this corrosive uh, attack. So platinum is the best catalyst now today and the best commercial catalyst. The problem, the problem with, with platinum is that it's very expensive and very scarce in the world. So it's not possible to make a, a massive uh, vehicle moving with these devices because we will have the same dependence uh, of a few countries. Only two countries produce more than 70% of the platinum of the world. Okay, so it's, this is because the problem is to find new catalysts. Uh, so motivated with this, we start a different uh, system uh, the main system that we are studying is uh, have an, an bio, biological origin, which is, for, for instance, the, the hemoglobin, which constitutes the, the, the red blood cell. So the active sites of the hemoglobin are this molecule, which is an iron surrounded by nitrogen, a fine nitrogen in this case. The, the property of this molecule that can capture the, the oxygen molecule without break the molecule, okay? And can, uh, when one capture this, uh, this molecule in this size, can uh, move the, can uh, 
leave the oxygen to all over the, the body. So in, in 1964, Jasinski uh, demonstrated that this molecule also work as a catalyst, not only capture, but also can break with a lower energy than the oxygen gas phase, okay, which is five electron volts. So uh, since 1964, it's, it is known that a uh, metal center surrounded by nitrogen, four in this case, uh, can uh, catalyze the, the oxygen break. Okay. So there is another molecule like iron We have the same properties. So we we study this this uh, this system, the metal center surrounded by nitrogens, but in graphene. This, this was very popular in ten years or more than ten years ago, uh, because when you have a, a graphene, if you remove two atoms and so, uh, replace the surrounding atom with nitrogen, you can form this structure, okay? Which is the same uh, molecular structure that the, the porphyrins or the talosanin is a four coordinate metal center. So this was very interesting because the uh, uh, graphene is metallic, so you need to, in, in, you need to supply to this center shared in order to make the catalysis or to break the molecule. Uh, we studied this, uh, this is, uh, the formation energy of this system, and uh, you can hear here in this graph, the energy needed to create a, a vacancy, which is very large, more than seven electron volts. Typically, this, this is produced by iron implantation, okay? Uh, and then, if you replace the nitrogen, the, the, the formation energy low, and if you include a metal center, which we consider iron, cobalt, and manganese, the formation energy is very low, more include, including negative in one case. So, what does it mean? Uh, so, this means that the, the system is stable. This is important because the system needs to be stable to work as a catalyst. So we, we then uh, calculated the electronic property of this system in graphene and also uh, know that it's metallic. So there is no problem with the transfer of shares to this, uh, to this center. So if you, if you uh, consider cobalt, Atom as a metal center uh, because the oxygen is a, is a triplet in the, in the ground state, you can obtain two uh, spin states. But if you have, uh, if you have a, a iron center, you can obtain three um, spin states. Interestingly, that the, the, the minimum energy is the is a singlet, and also the triplet has very low energy, so this system can be coexist. Yeah? This is an important thing. And then we calculate the, the energy barrier to break the oxygen molecule on this center, in the, in the ion center, uh, and with, uh, for the two spin states, and we found that the, the barrier has 1.1 electron volt. So, if you consider that platinum have a barrier to break the oxygen molecule of 0.8 electron volt, so it was very interesting to the system. Okay, and also we have graphene, which graphene is very resistant to to the attack of other molecules. So this was very important uh, ten years ago, approximately, uh, uh, as an alternative catalyst for the oxygen production reaction. Okay. Uh, but the problem is that you cannot uh, uh, functionalize this system to increase, to reduce the, the, the barrier for the dissociation. So we return to the molecule um, and study uh, 
uh, different possibilities to reduce more the, the activation energy for the oxygen break. We first consider a, a, an iron thousand in carbon nanotube, absorbent and a, and a metallic carbon nanotube, and we found that the barrier is, is similar that we found previously in, in graphene. And then we tried another uh, strategy, for instance, functionalize the, the talosanin molecule with uh, chlorine in the, in the surrounding, uh, replacing the, the hydrogen atoms or fluor. So we have no important difference in the energy barrier. And then we adopt another strategy is to consider a five coordinate metal center. That is uh, with, uh, with this molecule, which is a, a which is, a, is anchoring the, the molecule. This system are, a, a, have an abundant value interaction to this. It's a sorbet stacking with a piece stacking interaction, but it's very strong, about 1.8 electron volt. This molecule are absorbed on the, on the surface of the nanotube. But in the other case, in, this, in the other approach, we try um, a chemical interaction, a bonding interaction between uh, the, this metal center. So we also consider the functionalization of the molecule with different uh, system in order to try to reduce the, the energy barrier. But we, are, we have a large energy value than our previous result. This is a cobalt uh, uh, talosinine. And we also conclude that mo making some modification on the molecule, you can uh, approach to, this is a typical volcano plot of uh, electrochemistry, which is the in this exit is the binding energy of the oxygen molecule on the on the catalytic center, and this is the current. So, the best catalysts uh, are situated in this region. Okay, so in, with our different approach to increase the catalytic activity, we move very slow the 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 activity of the catalyst by making some. Uh, Posturalization of the molecule. So, in conclusion, we uh, we cannot uh, reduce too much the the energy barrier uh, for uh, for a molecule uh, uh, catalyst. Uh, in the case of iron, uh, with uh, Four coordinated, five coordinated uh, metal center. Uh, this is our final result, and we compare with the with the oxygen on, uh, breaking up on platinum. So typically, this is the uh, the result. The best catalyst for a molecular catalyst would be iron in penta coordinate penta coordinate with with nitrogen. This is structure. Okay. So the best we we obtained was about one uh, electron volt, which is also close to the platinum one. Okay, okay so uh, the other problem that emerged in this system that this kind of catalyst work in a solution. So all this uh, approach that we made during five or six years um, was in vacuum. So the main problem that experimentalists find in this uh, in this kind of catalyst is the demetallation or the degradation of the molecule. So the molecule do not work too much. Okay. So we would, our next step was investigate what happened in a real situation. So we we studied the deactivation. Of graphene supported iron talosanin in acidic and alkaline media by ammonium molecular dynamic simulation. So, 
to do that, we first prove uh, our, our molecular dynamic simulation in a, of water. Yeah? We put a uh, hundred water molecules in a box that have the density of the experimental density of water. So this is our free energy result. We can we make a simulation in five picoseconds. In the last uh, uh, three picoseconds, the energy is stabilized. Okay, and this is our result for the radial distribution function, which essentially is the distance between atoms in during the simulation. As, as can you see here, the in parentheses are the experimental results. In this number here represent the peaks. Okay, so for instance the oxygen hydrogen distance during this, this in this system have a very large peak which is essentially the distance in a molecule of the oxygen and hydrogen but the second the second is the first uh, is uh, the first the distance between the one molecule and its first neighbor okay so we found that the distance between oxygen and hydrogen is 1.75 and the experimental one is 1.8. The second peak is found in 3.22, which is the with the third neighbor. As a, there is the distance between one oxygen and the third neighbor uh, molecule. So this result shows us that the our simulation was uh, uh, can reproduce the main property of what Okay. We made this calculation in the NBT canonical ensemble. We use uh, a PBA as exchange correlation and a deep leaf Van der Waals approach. Okay. The simul this simulation was made at, at room temperature and the, this, and the time is of one frame to seconds. Okay, so to study the interaction of the, the, this. Uh, iron uh, thalosine molecule absorbent on graphene, we made this uh, unit cell which contain 72 water molecules surrounding the molecule. Uh, this molecule is absorbent on, uh, on graphene. Okay? So uh, in, this, uh, in this graph I, I show you the, the interaction between a water molecule and graphene. So we found that that a water molecule is attracted uh, uh, on the surface and become three arms from, from the surface. But if the molecule is approached to the surface, uh, there is a, a very large reclusive uh, barrier. So essentially, graphene is impenetrable for, for molecules. Okay, so uh, with this supercell, we can reproduce. Uh, large uh, graphene surface with molecules absorbed on it with water. Okay. This is the, the, the supercell replicated in the in the uh, Z direction. So we have no problem with this water of the surface with the bottom of the of the graphene because this effect is very important. There is no possibility that that a water molecule cross graphene, so it's a it's a barrier. So with this approach, we uh, we make the same the the main calculation. We try to obtain the binding energy of the oxygen uh, on water, yeah? uh, which is attached to the to the metal center, in this case, iron. So, to obtain an energy that can be used, we uh, study two identical systems. But the only difference between this system is that the, in one case, you have a water molecule attached to the, to the iron center and in the second uh, system, you have an oxygen attached to the metal center. So the, the system has the same number of atoms, volume, and temperature. Okay? 
So uh, if you have a difference between the free energy for these two systems, we have this, okay? Essentially, we have this. So the, the difference in free energy is the difference in entropy, the difference in zero point energy, and the difference in the in entropic terms. So as the systems are identical, we can uh, consider that the entropy is close to zero, the difference in entropy, and the difference in zero point energy is close to zero. So we have essentially an energy that, that we can use, which is the, the, the different free energy is typically the different in the entropy. Entropy is this term. Okay, so with this approach, we run both systems at the same time, and this is a result for the variation of free energy. And we found in the in the red curve is the in this system, the oxygen binding to the metal center of the calcium. And in this system, you have the water molecule attached to the to the metal center. So the difference in free energy gives you the binding energy of oxygen, essentially. And we find with this that the binding energy is 1.8 electron volt. So this was very interesting because in vacuum, the binding energy in the same system, so without water, only vacuum, uh, the binding energy is about 0.7. So the influence of the medium is very important. Okay. So we then try to simulate a uh, acidic solution. Yeah. We consider different acidic media, including hydrochloric, acetic, and sulfuric acid in water. So when you put this molecule, the hydrochloric, the acetic, and the sulfuric, uh, immediately in water, immediately the proton, what proton is removed? So you find here a, a, a chlorine anion, uh, this, uh, which is called acetate, and this is sulfate. Okay? So we want to know what is the effect of the acid anion on the metal center. If you remember, we are trying to understand why this molecule uh, do not uh, uh, is not stable too much too much time. So we we want to know what is the effect that the acid make in the stabilization of the molecule. So uh, in the same way, we reproduce. Uh, the same system, but in one case you have the the this ligand iron uh, sulfate. In the in this other case you have this ligand iron water. So the sulfate is in the solution. This is approach one molar in density of the acid. Okay, so if you compare these two systems, you can obtain the, the energy that the, the anion, the acidic anion, interact with the metal center. We made uh, this simulation. And here, if you can see, this is the, uh, the sulfuric uh, Iron attached to the to the iron, and this is a water molecule attached to the to the iron. So uh, the the acid anion is in the solution. We run for uh, five picoseconds this two simulation, and we find that the the system preserves. So the, the in one, in one case the water remain attached during the simulation. This simulation was made at 80 Celsius degree because it's the operational temperature of the of the catalyst. So we, we, with this uh, simulation, we demonstrate that the, the system was very stable. Effectively, the, the acid anion remain uh, bonded to the 
to the iron, and also water molecule remain uh, bonded to the to the metal center. So this is a competitive effect. So once you have an acid anion attached to the metal center, it's not possible that the oxy the oxygen molecule arrive to the metal center to to produce the the oxygen reduction reaction. So this is a kind of of blocking the metal the metal center to the reaction that we are interested. This is called in the in the electrochemical uh, language uh, poisoning. Okay, the the catalyst is poisoning. So uh, we also studied the, the proton interaction. So we 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 run three three simulation. The water attached to this to the metal center with the anion anion acid anion in solution, the proton binding to the metal center, and also the uh, sulfate anion attached to the metal center. So we compare the three the three system, and we find that the water and the acidic anion have all, always the same energy for the case of this acid, which is uh, sulfuric acid. So these systems are compared are competing each other, okay? But uh, the proton have, have a very large energy, so it's not possible that they remain too much time close attached to the to the metal center. The proton is removed, okay? So the sulf uh, the sulfate anion remains attached to the iron atom with almost the same binding energy as the water molecule, having the possibility of blocking the the catalyst. We also study for another acid, which is the acetic acid, this one. This, the, the same three interaction with water, with proton, and with the anion of the acid. And we found that in this case, the lower energy is water, yeah, have the lower energy. And with 0.45 electron volt, have the, have the acid anion. The proton also have a very large energy. so. We discard the possibility that a proton block the, the metal center. So in this case, for this acid, uh, it is energetically unlikely that the acetate anion will remain attached to the iron atom. Therefore, the oxygen production reaction will be favorable in this medium. So it will depend on the acid. Finally, we we study uh, chloride, which is a, a in the same three interaction, in this case, you have only uh, a chloride anion uh, that is in solution uh, and attached to the metal center. And also, it's compared with the proton. So, in this case, occur the inverse that the previous structure. The most stable system is the is this interaction. The the chloride attached to the uh, metal center. So in this case, would be clearly a blocking system. Okay. So these three acids we also compare with an alkaline solution. Typically, an alkaline solution is an, for instance, a sodium hydroxide. This molecule. So when you put sodium hydroxide on on solution. Immediately, the the it forms a sodium cation and hydroxide anion. So we study the interaction of the hydroxide anion as compared with water. Uh, also, they have almost the same energy. So this uh, this uh, anion have the possibility to to poison. Or to to attach to the metal center, but on the contrary, the sodium cation do not attach. When you put close to the iron atom, immediately removed and is surrounded by water molecule. So this is our radial distribution function, which essentially shows the distance between the the atoms, essentially the, the, the iron oxygen uh, 
this time it's almost the same, yeah? but the distance between the uh, chlorine and, and iron is much larger. But the important thing is that the interaction of the uh, the energy of, uh, of the different acidic ion with iron is uh, negative. This means that the, there is a possibility that the anion of the acid will block the metal center of the catalyst, uh, impeding to the oxygen to arrive to this center. Uh, and we also study other uh, possibility of the uh, that can can be affected the the oxygen production reaction of this catalyst. This is the demetallation. So we study the demetallation as induced by the by the anions of the different acid. So to study this, we consider two systems. The first system is uh, an acid anion attached to the to the metal center with an extra with an extra um, hydrogen molecule, and the other case is the metal center attached to the to the anion, but with a free base thalosanine remain. So we, these two, this molecule uh, try to compensate the number of atoms of this uh, free base thalosanine, which exists with two protons. Okay, so these two system was uh, compared uh, with in solution, okay? And our result are show in this graph uh, you can see here that in blue is the the metal center attached to the anion, uh, and in red is the metal center removed by the effect of the anion. Okay, so in all this case, we found that the energy needed to remove the metal center. Uh, by the, the different uh, anions have very large energy. So it's not possible to have a demetallation as induced by the anion of the acid or in the alkali solution also, a very large energy. So demetallation was, uh, was shown that it's not possible. Energetically, energetically it's not possible to occur in this in in these systems, uh, so most of our theoretical result was uh, was uh, part of uh, an experimental result. So, in the case of the effect of the different anion or the acid, uh, our co our colleagues uh, perform calculations, uh, experiment, and here we've, we show you the, the most relevant result. The third result, this graph, is the turnover frequency, which essentially is the efficiency of the catalyst for the oxygen reduction reaction. So it's compared with platinum, it's the best catalyst. So you can see here that uh, the the reaction ran very well in uh, alkaline solution, these two greens, but in the acid go go uh, bad, mainly for chlorine and for um, sulfate. In the case of acetate, it worked, very, worked a little bit better. So this means that the our uh, performance that we calculate have the same trend than the experimental one, which is compared with the, the catalytic activity. So, for certain acid solution, the, the efficiency of the catalyst is very poor, which can be 
com uh, compared with our result and associated associate with the blocking of the metal center of the metal center by the acid. Um, this uh, is another result which show the poisoning or the blocking effect as compared with different uh, is the, is the free energy as compared with different acid and also the alkaline and have the same trend that the the energy is very high for this for this uh, acid so we can expect that the blocking really occur in the system so finally uh, this uh, this trend which experimentally uh, verify that uh, show uh, show us that the effectively the acid of the system influence the the activity of the catalyst so certain acids are likely are other not uh, the best acid that you can make this uh, uh, you can have um, an oxygen reduction reaction with this one uh, acetate but the, the other chlorine and sulfate is is a very bad uh, performance we are very happy with this article but two weeks uh, later appears another uh, experiment this is an experimental result <coughs> with the main conclusion of a study the same system yeah? the, the molecular degradation of the tarsanine molecule during the oxygen production reaction in acidic medium yeah? so uh, they uh, they conclude that the attack by the free radical is found to be the main reason for the instability of the iron tarsanine so uh, in this way, there is much more controversy on the, the on the origin of this uh, degradation process. So we study, uh, we are running calculation to 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 verify this result. Uh, but as can you see, uh, this uh, there is multiple. Uh, origin for this uh, de uh, degradation processes okay uh, well my conclusion for this work is essentially okay, um, molecular dynamic sim simulation corroborate the existence of the catch and absorption phenomena on the metal center of the of the iron tarosaline catalyst which induce a blocking effect so the anion will block, will block the metal center and impede the oxygen to arrive to the, to the metal center to, to produce the, the oxygen production reaction. It, and this occurs in both acidic and alkaline media. And the calcium binding energy follows this order, which is in close agreement with the experiment. Okay. Uh, also, the demetallation mechanisms as induced by the anion is energetically unlikely, so it will be discarded. And finally, the absorption of certain anions on the on the catalyst active side will be the origin of the low performance or Well, finally, I would like to acknowledge to our experimental team with these guys from the University of Santiago de Chile, leaded by Professor Federico Tasca, and also would like to acknowledge uh, the, our agency that finance our research and our computational of resources. And also, thank you very much for your attention. Professor um, Walter, uh, thank you very much for this very uh, nice and didactic uh, uh, talk. Uh, so it's now open to questions. We have uh, uh, Iraq is in the audience. He finally made it uh, right at the beginning of your talk. And so uh, Edson is always uh, has good questions. Uh, 
we have any questions? Uh, I have, I have a, a, a what's a, maybe I, I didn't understand uh, the system quite well. Uh, what, what are the results if you have only water, if you don't have a basic or a, you have pure water? Is, does that make, make any sense? I, because I am understanding that uh, if you put an, if you have a, an acid, you can have the blocking effect, right? So this is bad for the, for the catalyst. So why don't have, why you don't use only purified water? Plain water, uh, what would be the reason not to do that? Maybe I didn't understand the system quite well. Well, uh, the problem is that you cannot uh, have a real system in pure water. Okay. It is acidic or alkaline. This is two possibilities because the system during the, the construction of the... Uh, okay. It need to be uh, made in certain uh, acid media to work before. Okay. Okay? So okay. it's possible to avoid this this uh, media or different okay. acidic media. Okay. So you are just trying to find which one is less uh, blocking, right? Uh, exactly. So uh, it, we are essentially compare the pH of this acidic media. Okay. Different acids have different pH. So with this result, we try to establish that the system, the catalytic, the catalytic system, will run very well in, in for particular pH or acid. Okay. So for for instance, uh, uh, sulfuric acid is very acid, and chlor chlorine acid also very acid, but not this. Uh, other acid, acetic okay. acid, is less has a less um, pH. So, in in terms of the we we run this calculation in terms of the acidic medium for different. Okay. So, the lower the pH, the better. Yes. Okay. But not, oh. but not too low. So okay. It's a, 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 a about we we. Estimate about uh, four pH. Okay. Okay. Not to ask, but to ask it like a two or one. Okay. So we have uh, Iraqi has a question. Iraqi, please go go ahead. Hello, hello, Walter. Hello. Thank you for for the presentation. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if I can turn on my camera. I think I don't. No, no, no. It's not going to work. Okay, so, but we can hear you. Okay. So, Walter, I have just one one uh, very simple question that uh, when you considered the structure of G vacancy, G vacancy on the on the graphene, yeah. and you put a transition metal, yeah. you have this structural model. Can you show me? Um, uh, let me uh, ask. With no water. With no water. You mean this? Yes. And uh, when you calculate the formation energy, you have consider considered one structural model of different. Yes. This two two V two vacancy. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. But I think the the structural model of G vacancy on the graphene is not that. Is that there's a uh, other other configuration. Uh, which is uh, very stable. In fact, uh, the formation of uh, D-vacancies on the graphene uh, present a very low formation energy when you compare with the formation energy of a single vacancy. And the, my question is, if you consider considered the other model, the, the other model, more stable configuration for D-vacancy, uh, you will still have a, a negative formation energy. Have you checked that? Uh, I haven't. I haven't checked it. Uh, but uh, uh, with this calculation, we try to find if this system, this metal, yeah. 
for coordinated system is stable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the formation energy calculation uh, show very low formation energy, so we can infer that this system yeah. will be stable. Uh -huh. But we, this was uh, the the vacancy that I show here. Uh, you say that it's not the most stable one, but uh, have no much more interest because we are very uh, concentrated concentrated in this kind of structure, which is oh, okay. iron four nitrogen mm -hmm. embedded in in graphene. Uh, our this calculation was to try to find if this is uh, uh, enough stable to resist. For instance, a water or the attack of other molecules. Ah, yeah, yeah, you did that. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Um, I have, I have another question. I was wondering how, uh, because you, you do a, you do a calculation based on a, on a supercell calculation, right? You put. Uh, uh, you arrange that periodically, uh, taking care that they are at a certain distance where they don't interact. You mentioned that in the beginning, right? Uh, how uh, realistic is that with the uh, experimental situation? Because I assume that uh, the experimental situation is kind of a mess, right? It's not organized. It's, uh, so how realistic is the, the simulation that it has to be done this way, right? It has to be periodic, right? There is no other way. Yes. Uh, who are you doing it with the FT? How realistic is with uh, something that in my mind, it probably, I think of it as something very messy, very uh, random, let's say. Yes. Well, this is a very, uh, um, Ideally, ideal system, but in, in what we have, uh, the, my experimentalist colleague, colleague uh, showed me that uh, they found that the, the the this molecule, this flat molecule, the porphyrin or talosanin, attach very strong and uh, approach each other. Very okay. Cool. okay. They try to form um, a second a second. Uh, Layer, second layer, okay, okay. Close, very close to each other. But they note that when water is included, they try to separate a little bit, which okay. is which is typically something we found here. Okay, water enter. Uh -huh. So okay, nice. Density of the absorbed uh, porphyrin or calcium molecule is very high. Okay, so this was. Uh, the reason because we use the, the size of the of the supercell in in x direction because I know with with the, that the molecule are very close to each other. Okay. 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 Perfect. Um, uh, okay. Um, so, um, if there are, uh, Rafael is there, Rafael always has some questions. Rafael, why are you not ask, asking questions today? Put you on the spot. So, Edson is fine too. So, uh, if there are, if there are no, no more questions, we should thank the speaker again. Thank you. Thank you very much for the nice talk. It was a pleasure. Ah, there is Edson. Edson, Edson is uh, oh, yeah, quite never yeah. fails. Never fails. I can't do what is right of oh, that talking to me. Sorry. Because I, I am the home, so that, that's the problem. Can you so, hear me? Yeah, do you, do you have a question? Yeah, I, I, but it's a kind of technical question. I could skip that, but since I'm, I'm talking already, so this is more, uh, this is more it's very big. Um, when you, when you, you shown this 
uh, it's very pedagogical by the way uh thank you for yeah your your, your voice is a bit, can you talk a bit closer to the microphone let me try to change my microphone here uh, Is it better now? It is, it is, yeah, yeah. So, um, oh, by the way, thank you for a very, very pedagogical uh, talk. And my question very is, is very naive, maybe. So if, if you go at the beginning of your talk, you have shown this, um, uh, like, self-consistent uh, scheme for, for the... Uh, <coughs> for the um, DFT calculation, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, yes, that one. You see, I'm not uh, found very fond of DFT calculation. So my, my, my question is, uh, the time consuming is the entire process of self-consistent calculation, this loop, or in the specific, or you need to do many loops in general, or you have some specific part of this code that is time consuming? Well, the self consistent calculation is typically uh, very quick. In uh, less than 100 cycles, you can achieve the, the, uh, the self consistent cycle. Uh -huh. uh, you can obtain a, a, a convergent density, a convergent density to, to make this calculation of the total energy and the forces. The uh -huh. problem is the forces. Because uh -huh. once you calculate the electronic parts and obtain the energy, you calculate the force, move the atom to minimize this force and run again. So uh -huh and make another cycle, electronic cycle, and then move again. So the, the, the steps of the moving atom is the most uh, time-consuming process. Mm -hmm. And in, in complex system, you have, for instance, uh, hundreds of movement to achieve the, the, the minimum energy. And also we find different minimum, different minima. Uh -huh. So in this case, you have to move the system to try to find the the minimum one, the the, the global, the global minimum, the global minimum. So the problem of the of the DFT calculation is that do not uh, overcome barrier. Only go to the minimum, oh. independent if this is the global or a or a, a specific minimum. Okay, so. Uh, you have to take some care to uh, find the minimum energy of a system. Typically, we we know that the system in our calculation we know much, uh, more or less what is the minimum. But in other systems, more complex with a mass more atoms, you have very different uh, minimum minima, and to find the global one is you have to put in every minima the the system by hand and you find the minimum one compare the other energies okay i see so there is a so there is a a, a not this uh this uh fluxogram so it is inside the big a big loop exactly oh, yeah. okay Perfect. good so this is for for the start for the uh, for a zero K uh, calculation, okay? But if you have a molecular dynamic simulation, the system is different because you have energy of the system, the whole system move, and if you are very carefully in reducing the temperature of the system, you can find the global minimum, mm -hmm. okay? But in this case, we have made this calculation uh, at zero K. No, no, but the the calculation of the molecular dynamic calculation uh, take the same process, but including an extra energy, which is the path, uh, 
when you put the system to certain temperature and the, the whole process is also, almost the same. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, if there are there are no more questions. We, we thank the speaker again. Thank you very much for, for your talk. Uh, we're going to post the video. We're going to post the video at uh, our YouTube channel. And I'm going to write you an email uh, in the next couple of days asking for the slides if there is no problem, if uh, there is nothing that you still want to publish or something like that, to post together with the video. Thank you very much.